name is uh, Fred Caballero. I am CEO and co-founder of Startup State. Um, background, I uh, originally graduated as a journalist. I'm originally from Argentina. I uh, didn't like the work of a journalist. I, I, I liked uh, what I studied. Uh, so I never became a journalist. But uh, I really, I was, I was always really into technology and uh, uh, another part of my life I spent a bit in call center. Um, I lived in, well, I left Argentina when I was 22. I lived in uh, Spain, uh, Madrid, and West Palm Beach in Florida. A couple of years, three years in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, then five years in, in Dublin. Uh, a few months in Cork, in the south of Ireland, and a couple of years ago I moved to uh, London. Um, during my time in Ireland I also studied uh, stockbroker investment, uh, uh, internet marketing, I uh, got a diploma in, in, in marketing as well in Ireland. So my background is more in, I'd say, marketing and sales. Not at all, no. Um, I met my partner, which is based in Dublin. I met him uh, 12 years ago in university. And uh, we, we, back then we didn't really think about doing anything together. But uh, once I moved to Ireland from the States and he was already there, we started thinking about having our own gig, doing something together. So uh, in 2008, probably the worst time to start a business, we uh, started a web agency called Challengeship. And, uh, uh, without knowing absolutely anything about web projects. So what we did is uh, we worked with, a, we, built a, we built a very good team of designers, developers uh, in Argentina, and uh, we worked with very good of them, and we learned a lot. We worked in loads of different web projects. Um, so that gave us a lot of knowledge uh, in terms of you know, how, how to uh, work on, on, on websites, how to, you know, how to deal with designers, developers, how to recruit them as well. That's a very valuable information. Um, 2010, we incorpor <clears throat> incorporated the agency in London, and about, uh, I'd say, a year and a half later, we, we started kind of feeling that we were not giving our best with the agency, and we could do much better, and uh, we started just, you know, testing a few ideas to see what we could do. Uh, we would take a, you know, he would take a day off on Mondays, I would take my day off on Fridays, sort of brainstorm, trying to really come up with good stuff. Um, the only way you can be creative is when you have free time to think about that stuff. Uh, so we did that, we came up with a few ideas that didn't work, it was around ebooks. we didn't have that much experience about publishing, but we, you know, we both had in common that we really liked um, the, the startup world, uh, we really liked anything around entrepreneurship and, uh, and travel, that's what we've done pretty much all, all our lives, we, we, we speak different languages, we travel throughout, you know, we live in different cities, so we said, you know, it's a perfect combination, great recipe, um, let's do something and back then when it was 2008 we were still trying to to start the, the web agency we knew nothing about starting a business so while we were traveling we said it'd be fantastic to meet people that can really help us understand what's what's like uh, to start a business what does it involve and all these broad questions you have when you have no clue what it's like and uh, so it was just an idea it just rested there so when when it came to time to say this is a perfect recipe and we thought about that, then um, I'm a Teco member and I started seeing Teco members from Riga and Latvia sending uh, messages through Yammer to local members here in London saying, hey, we're going over there a couple of, couple of days to meet investors, um, can we crash at your place? And then I said, okay, that's, that's a pretty neat idea, we could solve that problem but at a global scale. Uh, so next step, which is we just threw out there a few experiments like surveys, holding page to test you know, what the appetite was. People got excited, opened up you know, a Twitter page, Facebook page, lots of very free things uh, to, to test what, what's the, what was the appetite out there, if the value proposition was going to be something that could potentially have an impact we want us. And uh, uh, all those tests, majority of them went really well. And, uh, the ones that didn't? <laughs> the ones that didn't, yeah, we, I wouldn't say they, they went wrong, but it didn't went out as, as well as we expected because, for example, when we ran surveys, um, we, we expected a lot, a bigger percentage of the people saying, yeah, I would do this, or I would do that, and not necessarily everything just matched what we had in our heads. But um, when, it, when it came down to the holding page and people signing up because we were excited about having this available, 
or talking to us, we collected a lot of light feedback, very valuable feedback on Twitter, because everything happens real time. So, you know, just, we started retweeting people. We, we didn't just go out there and spam people. We, we, we started, it took us like, th probably three, four months uh, of, of building up a community, uh, putting entrepreneurs, investors, uh, co-working spaces in different Twitter lists. And we also use something called Twitter feed. So we would get uh, those blocks that we would really like that really added value to the kind of algorithm position we we're talking about. We added their, their URL feed into Twitter feed. So automatically we started like promoting them every single day. So there was valuable stuff coming out of our Twitter feed account and more people acknowledged us that way. Um, and then as soon as we mentioned them uh, or we give them a plug uh, without saying anything, they will come back to us and say, hey, I saw you, I like what you're doing. Um, and there was a great way to get feedback without even asking for it. We networked a lot, so there was a portion of that uh, offline uh, through uh, Tech Hub, through, uh, I go to a lot of events, so, you know, Lomo Hacker News, um, Silicon Roundabout, Silicon Drinkabout, Tech City, Tech, City, uh, Tech Meetup, sorry, um, Flagons Den, so all these network I built, you know, was really helpful to talk to people that already met me face to face. And then there's a, there's a huge network I built throughout the years, I'd say, you know, with the agency as well, the past four years that we built through LinkedIn. And, uh, and then certainly a big network as well that we built through our social channels, uh, Twitter, Facebook page, Holden page, and the blog subscriptions to the blog as well. So those four channels, all of them free, just takes time to, to put in good content that reach out to the right people. But uh, that's pretty much how we build our first, uh, our first uh, small community. So when it was time to launch, uh, we just didn't rely on, on the press. We just relied on people that were expecting us to launch. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even go to the press. We didn't want to. Our site was, you know, empty. So we yeah. needed entrepreneurs in the different cities. So we wouldn't look back for the press, especially. So, um, yeah, we, we we relied on that small uh, uh, network. Uh, all together, our contacts, LinkedIn, and all the the contacts we got through our social networks. I'd say it was probably almost a thousand people, a thousand entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, so that helped us. And so when you first started the business, where were you based? Were you... Oh, here in London. Okay. Yeah, it was definitely here in London. It was... Um, it didn't you were in Tech ago. Hub straight away? Or yeah, in... yeah, I was already in Tech Hub, uh, doing some agency stuff there until we came up with the idea. Uh, we incorporated... The idea was... We, we started incorporating the idea, uh, like wireframing, like we, after the experiments. It was October last year, 2011. Okay. Uh, we incorporated the company Startup State Limited in uh, 9th of January this year. So uh, everything's pretty new. I mean, and, and then it took us four and a half months to put together the first prototype. Uh, very simple, very basic prototype. We wanted to do one thing very well, uh, so entrepreneurs could really find each other, connect, and finally meet face to face. That's all we wanted to do with the site, and that's all we wanted to validate. And how do you find working in a place like TechUp, having that, that community of other startups right next, next to you? Um, it really helps. Uh, work, I work from home a couple of couple of days a week, and then I go two or three times a week. Tech up. I, have, I live in the west west of London, so it, it's two hour commute return. Um, so uh, I find it phenomenal, uh, and the reason why I go there and really enjoy it, uh, despite the commute, I can just read stuff on my Kindle, so it's it's not that bad um, on the way. But uh, I find it very, really helpful. Uh, loads of people, uh, loads of. New startups I met there. Uh, it's a phenomenal place to network. Um, the quality of the entrepreneurs there, uh, and and the ideas that were you know and, and the talent is really amazing. Um, it helped us connect with key folks that really helped us before, during, and after launch. Um, the fact that TechUp aims to be like global, really. They just only in Latvia besides London. Uh, but they really aim to have one in Singapore and the States anytime soon, so that will really help us um, reach out to a bigger, a broader community. In fact, we, we are already helping Tech Hub as one of the co-working spaces that, that we're also helping connect uh, 
through Startup Stay entrepreneurs in Riga and London and vice versa. Um, it's been 10 weeks since launch. Uh, we're currently in f about 550 cities and 85 countries and we're about to reach 3,000 members, 3,000 wow, entrepreneurs. Cool. Very cool. It's an invite-only community, so uh, numbers probably don't sound huge to those that are used to, to, to hear about you know, Pinterest or Facebook, <laughs> but uh, uh, the quality of the network is absolutely amazing. Uh, there's two ways to enter, either you request an invitation through the um, homepage, startupstay.com, and then the founders will do a bit of due diligence and make sure that you know, you are an entrepreneur and uh, you're a starter, a creator of something, um, and then send you an invite code. Or uh, existing entrepreneurs that are members of Startup Stake and uh, they have up to five invitations to send out to invite people like them. And we definitely trust them. And that's definitely working 100% because people that they have invited to the network, it's been really amazing. So those 3,000 entrepreneurs we have so far and, and, and growing um, are all CEOs, co-founders, uh, the right, the right folks you would probably want to meet when when you travel. Uh, we self-funded and we're still self-funding it. At the moment, we're trying to raise uh, uh, some money. Um, we didn't want to just go and raise money like other businesses would do. Uh, we thought that it was really important to to validate the concept. If we say or our main assumption was, entrepreneurs and startups are willing to stay with other entrepreneurs or local entrepreneurs versus or rather than paying Airbnb or going to a hotel or a hostel. Um, and that really needed to happen before we could say that we have something. Otherwise, we would have built a platform for something else. So we said, we, we, you know, with all the experience we gained about managing web projects, let's go ahead and work with the same team we assembled, uh, we've been working with for the past three years. Uh, let's try to work with them. We're, we're a solid team, so you know we worked on all the projects. What's the difference? Just working on our project now, and uh, and we pretty much just built our prototype based on that. Just it's trying to the objective was to validate that assumption that it was validated about five weeks ago. Uh, it took a bit of time, but uh, uh, that's all we set out to do. Um, and now that we we proved that that works and we we have traction, we've been featured in. In, in different publications around the world and, and, and it's, you know, it's catching up a lot of momentum, I think this is probably the best time for us to now to go out uh, with the concept out there, uh, ready to show, functional, uh, with traction, uh, to go out and try to raise money. It's something we need to figure out. Um, what we did, one thing we didn't want to do is to while trying to validate the assumption, take this as a business and write a business plan and, w and waste all that time in something that we didn't even know was what was going to look like or it was going to work at all. So, first of all, we, fo we focused on trying to s build something really simple that could solve X problem. And only, and only after we saw that that worked, then we started working on a business uh, model. Uh, so far, we have two ideas um, and we probably need to, to tune it. Uh, but one is we have a few good ideas in the roadmap to launch a freemium model, a freemium service um, next year, 2013. Um, that's one, so a subscription model is probably going to be an annual membership, fixed annual membership. And the second one is that we're testing right now is after the press we got, we received, uh, we got a lot of interest from event organizers, from tech entrepreneurial events such as uh, DroidCon. Uh, Dublin Web Summit, Lean Camp, um, Startup Weekend. So we're working with a few of them. Uh, we built something really simple uh, to provide more exposure in, and in essence just help them boost up networking between entrepreneurs uh, that are coming from different cities or countries with local entrepreneurs and you know not just networking but because they don't have to spend money on accommodation uh, they'll certainly have more money to think about purchasing the ticket so hopefully we can also help them uh, increase ticket sales uh, so right now what we're doing is just working with them for free so uh, ideally if that works we can we can collect a, uh, a few interesting benchmarks and uh, build a product out of that and see how it goes well I'll tell you the bad thing and the good thing yeah. the bad thing is that it never ends when you, when you think 
when you think, when you wonder when is it going to pick up or when are we going to be able to, to, to at least earn the same money as, as we were before with salaries, uh, it looks like that time is never coming. Uh, the good thing about it is that I believe the main reason why many, many businesses went bust is because they were used to, they were used to the easy sale, to the easy lead coming in. And most businesses weren't even selling, they were just taking orders, right? Mm -hmm. So when the economy slows down and you're not used to go out there and hunt and you're just used to, to, to getting fed in your cage, uh, it's really hard to, you know, to, to, to put on the cap, you know, grab the gun and just go Step out there and up, hunt. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think what's, that's one of the main reasons why business went, went bust. So anyone that started a business always flexible and smart enough uh, uh, to really articulate, to to, to sell themselves better, their business better, to, to go hunt for that sale, to make it happen. Those are the only businesses that, that really survived or still or, or still in business today. So the positive thing I'd say is that uh, we have no clue what's like to, uh, what's like to, to be on, on normal business times, you know. We cannot compare it to, oh gee, before we, you know, we used to just sit down, just work with a couple of clients and we used to make whatever, you know, half a million a year. Uh, we have no clue what those times look like. Uh, all we know is that we, every single client, we have to go out and fight and, and to get it in, even the big clients we got in, and, and we had to really fight to keep those clients as well. Because, um, you know, all contracts were really unstable, um, you know, not necessarily, uh, you know, specific, especially during those times, uh, contracts, you, you know, it was difficult to sign 12, 18, 24 month contracts. Uh, so that's I guess that's there was big education for us uh, and that's the good side of of starting a business in, in such a downturn too many um, mm -hmm. the, the thing is there's so many things that you need to figure out and as soon as you start figuring them out uh, you get other challenges and by challenges it doesn't necessarily mean something bad uh, you know we, we're right now facing a few pro a few set of problems that are great problems growth problems um, uh, we're getting invited you know to many events to go talk at many events uh, in Singapore Istanbul to more than half of them we cannot go uh, we don't we haven't raised funds yet to, to do all that uh, I have uh, we're building a, a healthy community. I have to, you know, go meet with a lot of people within Europe at least. Uh, we cannot do that at the moment. Um, so those are good problems. Um, then the other other problems that that comes with with the entrepreneurial side, which are, you know, you need to really figure it out. And at the end of the day, you know, some days you think you made ten step forwards. Other days you think you've made none. Um, and other days you think you made the ten steps backwards. Um, and there's no really it's all in your head, it's all perception really, there's, there's no rule, that, you know, one of the things I really envy from, from traders is that they go home and they can say, you know, I, today I invested in X option or X share and, you know, I made a loss of three pens or, or I made, a, a, I made, you know, I, I, I made a win of X amount of money. Uh, but it doesn't work like that when you're an entrepreneur, you know, you, you just have the perception that you work so hard for days or, or weeks and you haven't achieved much when you probably maybe did achieve something. Um, so it's all perception. So those are one of the things that some days, because we're still figuring it out, especially with the business model, I'd say um, it's, it's a very interesting battle to, to understand what to do, what not to do, especially when it comes in like some advice uh, or investors advice. and. Um, and you're really stubborn and you, you, you can clearly see a few clear angles uh, but uh, other people tell you differently uh, so advice is not you know advice also becomes a problem as well you know uh, those just are probably one percent of all the problems I could have thought of in, in these two minutes <laughs> I I know the most experienced one to, to tell you the ABC but I can tell you this experiment don't just don't don't write a business a business uh, plan. It doesn't matter if investors are going to ask you for it. 
uh, just go experiment. Make sure that experiment with free stuff, all right? Experiment even offline. Even if you're going to build a website, like I like uh, um, Zappos story because you know what the guy did. It was it was just you know, is there a market to sell shoes? He went downstairs to the to the shoe shop and he paid them at at the real price and he put up whatever you know basic sites up there and um, and basically after he sold the pair of shoes he would go downstairs to the shop literally he just walked down the stairs paid for the pair of shoes that he just saw you know he took I think pictures of all the shoes whatever any you know, five-year-old kid could have done that and then just put them out there and it's the moment they, he sold it he went downstairs upon demand and just you know uh, and sell it of course that's not scalable it's just an experiment but that that's the point of this is try to experiment as much as you can before you embark into something that will be you know years of your life or months of your life and others um, and probably money from your savings or your family savings or friends uh, before you embark into any of that do some experimenting validate your assumptions um, and then go out there and, and, and try to make it happen raise funds whatever it is uh, ideally if you can really do it like very cheaply uh, and, and, and show something functional and, and ideally a few wins, it'll be a lot easier to get investment unless you have already a track record. Um, and the other thing is make sure you are solving a true problem to a segment you love and with a solution or product that you really love. Um, otherwise, if you do this for the money, um, it's going to be re really difficult because the first thing that's going to happen is going to, you're going to give up.